The Mary Lou Williams Trio was recently playing at Keystone Corner in San Francisco. The tape we'll be hearing was recorded there in April 1977 by members of the Women's Recording Group of KPFA. Performing with Mary Lou Williams are Larry Gales on bass and Eddie Marshall on drums.
necessarily so.
Bounds. Thank you. 
drums, and Larry Gale on bass. We'll take another short intermission and be back with you very soon. Don't forget to leave your request on the piano. And I also have LPs on sale here, Zoning and Mary Lou's Mass that was performed at uh, St. Patrick's Church in New York. Thank you very much. everything. Most musicians have lived through the air, but I've played through the airs. Uh, no longer than uh, in December, uh, the kids up there at Amherst picked their, their favorite giants, they call them. Uh, and that was me, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, um, what's the bass player, Ron Carter, and um, a tenor player, uh, Moody, James Moody, and Joe Jones. I did a concert with them in December. Mm -hmm. I play all styles. Everybody should. Mm -hmm. It's all great, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And what has happened during this era, some of the avant-garde guys think they're so far out until they're greater than the other cats, but they're not. All the music is great. It's, it's uh, music that should be on earth, should be played all the time because it has a healing in it. You know, and it's a, a conversation. If you can get to it while you're playing, you know, it's really needed. For, it needed for people to hear because the music that's being the commercial music that's being played on radio and TV, it's it makes people frantic. You know, puts them up in the air so far, and you need something to quell them. You know what I mean? Because I see great havoc on earth if, if jazz doesn't come back on radio and TV soon because the other music is making people too nervous. Syphilis, the electronic, my ear has gone out. And I thought because I was older. And the doctor told me, he said, that's happening to young kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems to be an evil to me to play so much of one kind of music and, and not even the classics. Mm -hmm. Time we were going. You see, the, the priests of the church, they know it's religious music. It came out of spirituals. And even Cardinal Cook opened up and let me do something that was like a miracle to to do a jazz mass in St. Patrick's Church in New York on Fifth Avenue where millionaires and, and things he they, they told me says that the people came to protest and said they loved it so they went away raving he asked me when was I going to do another one <laughs> and I, that's a miracle yeah. see because they know the music is valuable and you should be played That's a lot of money tied up in rock. Rock is good, some of it, but the slop that you hear on TV and radio is terrible. It destroys a natural talent. A little kid, two or three years old, is play, that would play the new era of music, it, it destroys him. He listens to what's being played, and it's nothing. In writing music, I may, get, I may hear something now while I'm talking to you, and it's the music that I'm representing is completely different than what you would learn in a school. Now, if I went to school and studied, I'd be able to write for NBC in the movies. And I don't like that. I, I create too much. See, it blocks you. And uh, in writing uh, compositions or playing jazz, you got to be free enough to play it as, you, as it comes in the mind. As fast as lightning comes from the mind, the heart, fingertips, faster than lightning. And if the mind stops, you just do patterns, you know, until you can get back. But in writing, the same thing happens. Like I was talking to someone, and, and I finish an arrangement all the time I was talking to him, and yet I could carry on the conversation. It's according how open you are for the feeling that comes forth, see? And it's wonderful that way. It never gets stuck. Often I'm driving the car and hear a horn go toot and start a tune. <laughs> I was on my way downtown on the subway and just the noise from the wheels, I arranged something. You know, you never know when the inspiration's going to come. 
I'm all music. Mm -hmm. Used to call me a dummy in the band. You see, I was not allowed to talk until I was about 25 or 30 years old. By when uh, the band I was with, they tell me shut up, think music, S stop talking, and that's what they did more or less. You know, and there was a mental telepathy kind of a thing that's going forth when they were with the band. You know, uh, when you played with them, like a guy would play something, you could answer him immediately then. And uh, the minds were were kept flowing like that, fast minds and whatnot. See, much different than what's happening now. Each individual is for himself. He saves himself and he could care less. And I don't understand it because if I don't accompany you well, then I, I won't even feel like playing a solo myself. Because you will not be able to play anything if I don't accompany you right. See? And uh, it's just an in individual and technical world now. Electronic. I have a lot of young kids uh, that... that uh, they come to me Saturdays when I'm working in New York, if I'm in New York. I take them back to Fats Wall and bring them up to date. They've got to know about the older music in order to play avant-garde. Mm -hmm. See, like the, the guys that they're patterning after, like Coltrane and all that, they would never be a Coltrane because they don't know anything about the basic. It's just like you start, you're going to school starting you in kindergarten, first, second grade, you know. And so what I do, I take them back to the older musicians. <coughs> I train uh, Hilton Ruitzes with Razan, pianist with him. I took him back to Fats Wall. I had him swing in the left hand. He can play anything, see? Mm -hmm. And that is the only advice I could give them. And that was Mary Lou Williams talking between sets with Martha Ullman and Joan Medlin. Now let's go out front and join the audience again at Keystone Corner, listening to the Mary Lou Williams Trio.
So we'd like to do caravan celebrating Duke Ellington's birthday.
was the Mary Lou Williams Trio with Larry Gales on bass, Eddie Marshall on drums, and Mary Lou Williams on piano. This tape was recorded live April 29, 1977, during a performance at the San Francisco Jazz Club Keystone Corner by the Women's Recording Group of KPFA. The technical crew was Joan Medlin, Fran Tornabine, Vicki Hebert, and Martha Ullman, who mixed and edited the music. The record you're listening to is a 1936 recording on mainstream records of Andy Kirk and his 12 Clouds of Joy, with which Mary Lou Williams was the pianist, composer, and arranger for more than 10 years. I'd like to thank Father Peter O'Brien and Keystone Corner for their help. This radio program was produced by Joan Medlin. Thank you. 